So, dear students, today we want to start studying about the redox reactions. Before uh, we understand it, let us uh, read a wonderful sentence that uh, says us that whenever uh, there is oxidation, there is always reduction. So chemistry is essentially a study of redox systems. Whenever there is oxidation, uh, it is necessary that there must be reduction. And thus the redox reduction and oxidation goes on simultaneously. Chemistry deals with the varieties of matter and change one kind of matter into the another. Transformation of matter from one kind into another occurs through the various types of reactions. One important category of such reaction is redox reaction. Redox reactions find use in biological, industrial, uh, metallurgical and pharmaceutical and agricultural areas. So our uh, redox reactions are useful in uh, many, uh, many areas like uh, uh, they are useful in a biological systems, they are useful in a various industrial processes, they are useful in the metallurgical processes, which are the processes in which the, uh, from the minerals or ores, we get the pure metal. They are useful into the pharmaceutical industries where the drugs are being prepared and they are also useful in the agricultural areas. Now, various examples of redox reaction. So let us look up to the various examples of the redox reaction. Number one, burning of different type of fuels for obtaining energy for domestic transport or other purposes. So when a fuel is burned, actually a redox reaction takes place. And by burning a fuel, we get energy for the various purposes that we have seen. Same way into the electrochemical processes. Now, what is the electrochemical processes? These are the processes which are used to produce electrical energy from chemical energy. So those processes which produce electricity, electric energy from chemical energy. So those reactions which are useful in conversion of the chemical energy into electrical energy, all these chemical processes are actually the redox reactions. Third one, extraction of metals and non-metals. You might have seen that during the process of extraction of metals and non-metals, we use displacement reactions. These displacement reactions are generally the redox reactions where the higher or more reactive metal displaces the lower reactive metals. Or even the displacement of hydrogen gas by metals from acid is also a redox reaction where both the reduction and oxidation takes place simultaneously. So uh, our metallurgical processes, we also have the uh, redox reactions. Then in the manufacturing of the chemical compounds like caustic soda. So when we prepare the caustic soda, we use the various uh, redox reactions. Then operation of dry and wet batteries. You know, we, we use various types of batteries which even convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. In that also we use the uh, redox reactions. In the corrosion of metals, uh, we have studied uh, about the corrosion of metals, corrosion of iron. This, this corrosion is actually a redox reaction. And into the various environmental issues like hydrogen economy. So when we study the hydrogen economy or to save or when hydrogen burns as a fuel, the reaction takes place is a redox reaction. So use of liquid hydrogen as a fuel. 
when we use liquid hydrogen as a fuel this hydrogen reacts with oxygen and produces water this is actually a redox reaction then development of ozone hole so whenever there is a development of ozone hole the various reaction takes place for the development of the ozone hole is are actually the redox reactions now classical idea of redox reactions that is what we want to study classical idea of redox reactions so classical idea of redox reaction tells us about the oxidation and reduction first so let us see what are the oxidation reactions and reduction reactions originally the term oxidation was used to describe the addition of oxygen to an element or a compound because of the pro because of the presence of dioxygen in the atmosphere that is approximately 20% so the term oxidation was first used by for the various processes that takes place into the atmosphere in the atmosphere we have almost 20% of oxygen these elements combines with the oxygen and they get oxidized and such processes were considered to be oxidation so the first idea that comes in our mind about oxidation is the addition of oxygen to a particular element many elements combine with it it means oxygen please remember many elements combines with it this is the principal reason why they commonly occur on the earth in the form of their oxides so many many element combine with oxygen and in the earth's crust they are generally found in, in the form of their oxides the following reactions represents oxidation processes according to the limited definition of the oxidation you can see here that magnesium combines with oxygen produces magnesium oxide it is an oxidation reaction sulfur combines with oxygen and it produces sulfur dioxide this is even an oxidation reaction in the above reactions element magnesium and sulfur are oxidized to their oxides on account of addition of oxygen so these magnesium and sulfur are oxidized and as they are oxidized by addition of oxygen and that is why they can be considered as a um, oxidation reactions similarly methane is oxidized owing to the addition of oxygen to it you can see here this reactions where methane which is a hydrocarbon any hydrocarbon when it uh, combines with uh, oxygen it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor so here also methane combines with oxygen that means methane is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water vapor a careful examination of the above reaction in which hydrogen has been replaced by oxygen prompted chemists to reinterpret the oxidation reactions so you can see here that actually carbon was combined with hydrogen this carbon has combined with oxygen now and hydrogen has also combined with the oxygen but actually oxygen has displaced hydrogen from methane and that is why so thus the hydrogen has been removed from methane and oxygen is being added thus the removal of hydrogen can also be considered as an oxidation and the chemist has started to reinterpret to reinterpret the process of oxidation so chemist reinterpreted oxidation as removal of hydrogen so removal of hydrogen from a substance should also be considered as an oxidation and here you can see that from the h2s there is removal of hydrogen so that the sulfur has been formed and this is what it is the uh, oxidation reactions as far as h2s is concerned or for sulfur if it is concerned so you can easily understand that sulfur here is like h2s is oxidized into the sulfur as knowledge of chemistry grew it was natural to extend the term oxidation so as far as knowledge has been in, increasing about chemistry there were new terms or new definitions for 
oxidation has been derived has been improved and new definitions for oxidation were given new extended concept is oxidation means reaction of elements with more electronegative elements so if you have two element a and b if b is more electronegative and a is less electronegative and if a and b combine to form ab then we can say that a has been oxidized we can easily say that my dear students that if ab is formed then we can say that a has oxidized and b is reduced so if an element reacts with the more electronegative element it itself has been oxidized and the opposite element has been reduced because it has reacted with the less electronegative element so you can see here my dear students that magnesium is electropositive whereas fluorine is electronegative so fluorine when it combines with magnesium magnesium is oxidized and fluorine is reduced magnesium when it reacts with chlorine magnesium is oxidized and chlorine is reduced magnesium when it reacts with sulfur magnesium is oxidized and sulfur is reduced so depending upon the electronegativity we can determine whether the reaction is oxidation or reduction and for what it is oxidation and for what it is reduction in the above reaction magnesium is said to be oxidized in all these three reaction my dear students you can say that in all these three reactions magnesium is being oxidized as the knowledge of chemistry grew up new concepts have been developed so still there were few new concepts that could be studied or that has been developed as the knowledge was growing what is the new concept removal of electropositive element is even oxidation so if there is a removal of electropositive element electropositive elements are generally the metals because metals are considered to be electropositive element but when we consider two metal one metal can be more electropositive than the other so again we need to consider it on the basis of their electronegativity but the removal of electropositive element is even an oxidation so here you are given an uh, reaction you can see that you have potassium ferrocyanide which is 2 k4fecn6 when it reacts with the uh, h2o2 which is so it gives us potassium ferricyanide that is instead of k4 now it has come to k3fecn6 so the first compound k4fecn6 was potassium ferrocyanide k3fecn6 has become potassium ferricyanide and this is what it is the process of removal of an extra k plus i so as there is a removal of electropositive element this is even an oxidation so this is how we understand that this is even a process of oxidation when our potassium ferro ferrocyanide reacts with hydrogen peroxide to gives us potassium ferricyanide and potassium hydroxide the above reaction is interpreted as oxidation due to the removal of electropositive elements as oxidation the removal of electropositive element potassium from potassium ferrocyanide before it changes to the potassium ferricyanide is actually the process of oxidation so now we define oxidation is addition of oxygen addition of electronegative element to a substance or removal of hydrogen or removal of electropositive element from the substance so now we have these four various definitions for the oxidation once again oxidation is addition of oxygen or it is an addition of electronegative element to the substance or it is removal of hydrogen from the substance or it is removal of electro positive element from the substance now we want to study about the reduction so let us see 
what is the meaning of the word or what do we understand about the reduction reduction means the removal of oxygen removal of oxygen from the compound was considered as a reduction you can see that this mercury oxide when it is heated it gives us the liquid mercury and oxygen this is the reduction process removal of oxygen from the mercury oxide however the term reduction has been broadened these days and now the meaning of reduction means what do we understand by the reduction reduction is removal of oxygen reduction is removal of electronegative element from the substance reduction is addition of hydrogen and reduction is addition of electro positive element to the substance once again reduction is removal of oxygen removal of electronegative element from the substance or reduction is addition of hydrogen or addition of electro positive element to a substance let us look at the few example if we have two fecl3 and we add hydrogen we get fecl2 and 2 hcl removal of electro negative element chlorine from the ferric chloride this is your ferric chloride which turn out to be ferrous chloride so as here we have ferrous chloride one chlorine has been removed from this ferric chloride and that is what we consider it as a reduction this is what we have studied into the 10th standard that this is an unsaturated compound we had hydrogen in the presence of nickel and we get saturated compound so here we we add hydrogen so addition of hydrogen is also considered as a reduction and in even in 10th standard we have studied this reaction as a reduction reaction then here you can see that we have mercuric chloride hgcl2 which reacts with the sncl2 and we get hg2cl2 and sncl4 so here one mercury was bonded with two chlorine now here two mercury are bonded with two chlorine so from each mercury one chlorine has been removed chlorine is more electronegative than mercury and that is why this is even a process of removal of uh, electronegative element chlorine from mercury same way if you look at the uh, cl2 so here initially with cl2 there was only one mercury was present but then you can see that mercury being electro positive there were two mercury present with two chlorine and that is why it is even an addition of mercury which is a electro positive element and this is also can be considered as a reduction so these are the various examples of the reductions but if you look at the essential to you will find that essential for has been produced that means with sn more chlorine has been attached and that is what it is the addition of the more electro negative element and we can say that tin sn has been oxidized during this process let us move forward and understand so now let's pay attention to this uh, reaction 2 hg cl2 plus sn cl2 that gives hg2 cl2 sn cl4 if we study it well we will call this hg cl2 as a mercuric chloride sn cl2 as a stannous chloride and from that we got the mercurous chloride and we get the stannic chloride we even call this compound as a mercury 2 chloride which is turn out to be mercury 1 chloride we had tin 2 chloride which turn out to be tin 4 chloride so as mercury is added to the mercury chloride as mercury is added to the mercury chloride to make it mercurous chloride it is reduction but at the same time tin 2 chloride essential to add some more electronegative chlorides to make it tin 4 chloride essential for this way it is oxidation or this way there is an oxidation process so thus it was soon realized that oxidation and reduction always occur simultaneously hence the word redox 
was coined for this class of chemical reactions. So what we can say that in the reaction given below, identify the species undergoing oxidation and reduction. You can see here we have these reactions, H2S gas plus Cl2 gas, that gives HCl gas plus sulfur. Here, H2S is oxidized because more electronegative element, chlorine is added to hydrogen, and more electropositive element, and more electropositive element, that is hydrogen, is added to the chlorine. So more electronegative element hydrogen is removed from the sulfur. And thus we can say that chlorine is reduced due to the addition of hydrogen to it, whereas our H2S is oxidized. So this is how, my dear students, we can identify the substances reduced and substances oxidized. Same way, if you look at the next reactions, Fe3O4 plus 8Al gives 9 Fe plus 4Al2O3. Aluminum is oxidized because oxygen is added to it and ferrous ferric oxide Fe3O4 is reduced because oxygen has been removed from it. So you can see that from this oxygen has been removed and here the oxygen is being added and that is why this is aluminum is oxidized whereas Fe3O4 is reduced. If you look at these reactions, two sodium solid reacts with the hydrogen gas to produce sodium hydride. Sodium is oxidized, though hydrogen is added to it. Now, please understand this. This is very important reactions. It's very important reactions. Generally, what do we understand? Addition of hydrogen, addition of hydrogen is considered as a reduction. But here, if you look at this, sodium is oxidized, though hydrogen is added to it. Hydrogen is reduced because it is added with more electropositive element that is sodium. So when we considered sodium and hydrogen, hydrogen is more electronegative. Hydrogen is more electronegative, whereas sodium is more electropositive. So when you add hydrogen actually to the sodium, you are adding or you are going to add more electronegative element to the sodium. And as the addition of the more electronegative element is actually an oxidation. And that is why here, when we add hydrogen to the sodium, though hydrogen is being added, the sodium has been oxidized, whereas hydrogen is being reduced. Please remember, it is an important reaction to be studied. Though here hydrogen is being added, the process is known as oxidation. If we compare the electronegativity, we realize that hydrogen is more electronegative than sodium. Thus, addition of electronegative element leads to the oxidation. And here, the sodium has been oxidized, though hydrogen is being added to the sodium. This is how, my dear students, we understand about the reduction and oxidation processes. Redox reaction in terms of a electron transfer. Now we want to study about the redox reactions in terms of the electron transfer. We have already learned that the reaction 2Na plus Cl2 gives 2NaCl. 4Na plus O2 gives 2Na2O. 2Na plus S gives 2Na twice S. The above reactions are redox reactions. How are they redox? You can see here easily that this sodium is always more electropositive than them. So this sodium is added more electronegative element. So sodium is oxidized and these more electronegative elements are being reduced. And that is why both oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously. And that is why we call these reactions as the redox reactions. Because in each of these reactions, sodium is oxidized due to the addition of oxygen or addition of more electronegative element like chlorine or sulfur. But chlorine, sulfur, and oxygen are reduced because to each of these elements, electropositive element being added. So from the knowledge of uh, chemical bonding, we can say that NaCl, sodium chloride, sodium sulfide, Na twice S, and sodium oxide, Na2O, are ionic compounds. 
so these all compounds of sodium whether they are oxide so chloride or uh, sulfide they are ionic compounds and they better and the reaction be better written or they can be better represented as this instead of nacl we should write na plus and cl minus instead of na twice o we should write na plus 1 2 o minus 2 instead of only na twice as we should write na plus twice and s minus 2 because in their crystals they are available as a positive and negative ion and they are attracted with each other with the electrostatic force of attraction so development of charges on the species produced suggest to write the reactions as this so when actually sodium 2 na reacts with cl2 and produces 2 na plus and cl minus sodium loses two electron and chlorine gains two electron when from sodium sodium oxide is produced sodium loses two electrons and oxygen gains two electrons same way when our two sodium reacts with uh, sulfide uh, sulfur to produce sodium sulfide sodium loses two electrons and sulfur gains two electrons so for convenience each of the above process can be considered as a two separate processes first process in which the uh, loss of electron is being involved and second process in which the gain of the electron is being involved so our 2 na produces 2 na plus by losing two electrons and our cl2 gains two electron and produces two cl minus so here we have the process of in process where the loss of electron is involved and we have the process where the gain of electron is being involved we might have or you might have understood my dear students till now that when an oxidation or reduction takes place we find that actually two type of reaction taking place simultaneously in one reaction there is a gain of oxygen a gain of electron and in one there is loss of electron so each of the above steps each of the above steps involving loss and involving gain of electrons so in the above steps my dear students we actually see the loss and gains of the electrons involving gain of electrons is called half reaction and involving loss of electron is also called half reaction so each of the above steps involving loss and involving gain of electron are called the half reactions this half reaction some of the half reactions gives us overall reactions so half reactions that involves loss of electrons are called oxidation and half reactions that calls the gain of electrons are called reduction reactions we can even call them the half reactions in which the uh, which involves the loss of electrons are called oxidation half reactions and half reactions that involves the gain of electrons are called reduction half reactions and my dear students oxidation half reactions plus reduction half reactions gives us the redox reactions so same way if we had oxidation half reactions that is 2 na solid Uh, that gives na plus one and one electron, not two na but only na. Na solid that gives na plus one and one electron. Cl gas gains one electron and gives Cl minus. From both the side, if we remove one electron, we get na plus Cl that gives na plus and Cl minus, which is a redox reactions. So here we get a new way defining oxidation and reduction by establishing a correlation between the behavior of species as per classical idea and their interplay in electron transfer change so here my dear students we can determine we can decide if the reaction is oxidation or reduction by the interchange of electrons or by the exchange of electrons so from the above discussion in the above discussion we realize that sodium which is oxidized behaves as a reducing agent because it it donates electron to each of the elements chlorine sulfur and oxygen to reduce them same way my dear students chlorine sulfur and oxygen are reduced and thus they act as a oxidizing agent because these elements accepts electron from sodium thus my dear students now we have the new definition 
what are the definitions oxidation means loss of electrons by any species reduction means gain of electrons by any species oxidizing agent means acceptor of electrons or substance that is reduced and reducing agent that means donor of electrons or substance that is oxidized so now my dear students we have various definitions for the uh, reductions and oxidations a reducing agent and oxidizing agent so now if you have uh, any doubt you can ask me thank you